Hello everyone, and from my cabin on a ship in Takarati, Ghana, welcome to Sailing with Soph, a podcast where I, Sophia, or Soph, take you along my adventures as a college student living and studying on a ship for about four months while my shipmates and I traverse through the ocean and travel to multiple countries across three continents. How am I doing this? Well, I'm on the spring 2024 voyage from January to April of a study abroad program called Semester at Sea, and we embarked the ship in Bangkok, Thailand, and since then we have sailed to Malaysia, India, Kenya, Mozambique, South Africa, and here we are in Ghana. Time really is flying by so fast. This voyage is actually, oh my god, we have less than a month. That is crazy. Ugh. In this episode, I'll be talking about one of the most thrilling experiences of my life so far, if not the most thrilling experience that I can remember, which I embarked on a little over a week ago in South Africa on March 6th, 2024. This experience involved jumping off of a bridge, yep, for the thrill of it, for the adrenaline rush, the adrenaline high. And let me tell you that this is an extremely high bridge. And I'll get into the details slash the specifications in a second. So how the heck did I jump off of a bridge? Well, to answer that question, I went bungee jumping. Yep, bungee jumping. Bungee jumping on one of the highest commercial bungee jumps in the world, according to all the signs I read and some things online. And this bridge is called Blucrons River Bridge. Hopefully that's the right pronunciation. But it's near Plattenberg Bay in South Africa and is located in South Africa's Eastern Cape Province. And our ship was docked in Cape Town, which is in South Africa's Western Cape Province. Anyways, this place, when you arrive, it has the Guinness World Record sign. So you certainly know what you're signed up for. Now, let me give you some stats specifications. According to Britannica, the bridge is 216 meters high or about 709 feet high above the river. So quite high and scary to jump off of. It is also 451 meters in length or 1,480 feet in length. And I also read that it is both the largest and longest bridge in the whole African continent and is one of the highest bridges in the world. Wow. Sometimes when I hear stats, they kind of just blow out my other ear because it doesn't mean much to me. But let me give you some comparisons you might be familiar with. So the height of the bridge is over double the height of the iconic Statue of Liberty, in case any of you listeners have seen that or been there. And it is about half the size of the Empire State Building's height. I'm from New York, if you can't tell, but hopefully these comparisons help give you the picture for this the tallness of this bridge. I still cannot believe that I jumped so high. Oh my goodness. <laughs> now, if you don't know what bungee jumping is, I looked it up on Google to make it crystal clear to you listeners. And to my surprise, a Google definition popped up because honestly, I didn't think they would have a Google definition for this, but it read the activity of leaping from a high place while secured by a long nylon cased rubber band around the ankles. So that is what bungee jumping is. That is what I did in South Africa. So really, let's be honest, you do not feel too much support from the gear on you because it does not feel like much at all. Now enough about the gear. We'll probably get into that a little bit more later on to this episode, but let's jump right into the story of my bungee jumping experience. Let me first start off by saying that this is all hypothetical all hypothetical, unfortunately, but totally understandably. The insurance we pay for and are provided for by Semester at Sea, it does not cover experiences like these, so Semester at Sea technically does not allow its voyagers to participate in experiences like these when there is a risk of serious injury or fatality. For instance, we're not allowed to rent a car or a motorbike, skydive, or bungee jump, you probably get the idea here. For legal reasons, and to be clear, this story is all a hypothetical. I'm not trying to get into any trouble during my trip. Now that that is out of the way, let's start from the very beginning. Bungee jumping was never on my radar before semester at sea, and I really hadn't heard much about it. When I knew I would be going to Cape Town, South Africa, I was making a list of potential things to do that I guess I just found by researching or watching other semester at sea YouTube videos. Bungee jumping was just not one of the activities on my list. I had never even heard about it, as I said, until... Really, the semester at sea trip actually started, and I heard some people talking about it on the ship, but I never thought much of it, and I really don't plan for ports too well in advance. So although I knew I wanted to do it once we arrived in Cape Town, I didn't book it until like 
36 or so hours in advance. Keep in mind that the location of the bridge is over a six hour drive from Cape Town, again, which is where the ship was docked. So this was practically a full day affair devoted to driving to the bungee bridge, finally jumping off the bridge, which feels like seconds and happens so fast, celebrating a little afterwards, and then driving the long drive back to Cape Town after feeling, of course, amazed and thrilled and all the awesome crazy emotions you feel. Originally, I was planning on paying for a package deal with a company where I would skydive, shark cage dive, and bungee jump. However, the timing was not very flexible, and I didn't know the people who I would be going with because not many of my friends wanted to go. And again, this is all hypothetical, but I really wanted to skydive with my friends rather than strangers, so I decided to save a couple hundred dollars and not do the package deal and instead do the bungee jumping trip on my own. So yes, it was just me and my driver for a long time in the car. My parents were not quite happy with me when I told them I was traveling this far all by myself. Personally though, I trust myself and I know I can make good decisions, so I was not worried. Also, some of my friends were like, what? You're doing it by yourself? Heck yeah. In the end, this was not something I wanted to compromise. It's literally a once in a lifetime opportunity here. Who knows when I'll be back in South Africa? I thought it would be totally worth it. And let me tell you, it absolutely was. I also found that like all the effort, if you want to say, that went into driving there, mainly by my driver really, <laughs> made the experience that much more intense and well worth it. And I had time to reflect and think about like everything that happened in the car ride, which was nice. One issue I still hadn't figured out less than 24 hours before jumping was how I would actually arrive to the bungee jumping place. I thought I could use Uber and book a ride in advance, but I guess it doesn't work for such long distances. Fortunately, and very timely, the day before I would go bungee jumping, my friend and I were in an Uber and I just asked my driver about transportation there and he said he would be willing to do it for, you know, an X dollar price. We negotiated a little and I got his WhatsApp number and he was very friendly and knowledgeable about Cape Town, had great ratings on the Uber app. You know, I thought I could trust him, which... He ended up being very trustworthy in the end. I got a decent deal because I inquired about other ways and I'm happy with the choice to go with Tabani. That was his name. I was also able to learn more about Tabani, who's a local South African. He was awesome though. I felt bad because he was definitely tired and he was saying it was a long drive. But of course, I'm very, very appreciative and grateful that I was able to cross paths with him because he was a huge part in making the bungee jump happen for me. If anyone happens to need a driver in the Cape Town area, I'm just going to shout out and plug to Bonnie really quick. You can contact him at area code 27, then 6850572 7284 I'll also leave this in whatever notes I can depending on where this episode is shared. But I wanted to plug that because Tabani was excellent. In total though, Tabani and I journeyed for about 19 hours for the bungee jumping to happen. So these 19 hours included all the driving, the bathroom stops, the food, and the short sleep stops for Tabani. And of course, the time spent at the bungee site. Tabani and I planned to leave at 1.30 a.m., <laughs> I don't think I got a single ounce of sleep that night. I met up with a friend late in the library on the ship because we were planning for the rest of Cape Town. And then we bought a few things from the snack bar. Yeah, now that I remember, I really did not even take a nap before leaving for bungee jumping. I was just going off of adrenaline. I was too excited. Of course, though, I plan on sleeping in the car, which is what I did for a decent amount of the ride. I still felt well rested in the end, though. So again, I met Tabani at around 1.30 a.m. at a place that was about a 10 minute walk from the ship. I soon slept pretty quickly. I laid down on the car seat and had my neck rest on me and my fuzzy basketball blanket. It wasn't too uncomfortable. Usually I have trouble sleeping in cars, especially if I'm just upright in the seat, but laying down with my feet and head on the seat was much more comfortable. We stopped at a gas station at a little past 6 a.m. and I saw the most beautiful sunrise. The sun was literally an orange color. It was super cool. After that, we continued on with our trek to the Blucherns River Bridge. In total, the drive going to the bridge was about seven-ish hours because we got there at 8.30 a.m.-ish around that time. So not too bad. Luckily, we got there just at the perfect time. Now, as I was checking in, signing in, there was actually a girl who looked about my age, so I was a little surprised, and she was with her family, but was the only one jumping. She seemed nervous, and I spoke to her, and we bonded over what we would soon do together, and over the fact that we were doing it solo. And it was actually nice. I was able to meet her and her family because I hung out with them after we jumped, and they held my belongings for me, recorded some videos and pictures for us. So a huge shout out to this amazing Swedish family I met. 
The girl's name is Irma, and her parents, Anika and Patrick, and her two sisters, they were all very, very nice. So, very grateful for them as well. Anyways, when I checked in, the lady distributed a little souvenir before even jumping, which I found funny because you would think they would give you this after you jump but what did we receive you ask we received a bracelet that was made out of the bungee rubber band or something like that i only took it off a few days ago but i had it on for a good you know week and a half now before getting suited up with the few gear that would be on us i made a quick stop to the bathroom mentally prepared myself took some before and after pictures of my face <laughs> Wait, no, actually, I don't think I did at that point. After the bathroom, I went back outside, got the harness on me that rises up your butt a little and wraps around your legs and shoulders. At first, we thought it was just Irma and I in the 9 a.m. time slot for jumping because that's the time we signed up for. It was actually the earliest you could do, I believe. But then two guys around her age from Norway joined us and an older man, probably in his late 30s or mid 40s, joined us. And we waited for them to get their harnesses on. We were then escorted into the, quote, restricted area zone. AKA the door that you enter that leads you en route to the start of the excursion. There's a sign covering the door that says, Welcome to the Adrenaline Zone. Enjoy the rush. Oh, heck yeah. So there are four main parts of this experience, and I'll go through them in order. First up is a quick little zip line ride. Maybe about 30 ish seconds. I couldn't even remember. It all goes by so fast. I was the first to go in my group because it was a random order, I think, but it was really fun. It hurt my crotch though a little because the thing is rising up my butt. I'm like, Jesus. But with the zip line, this is where you really get a glimpse of what you're about to do with the bungee jump and you realize, oh my God, oh shoot, I am freaking high up because obviously you're going to look down. So clearly the zip line is just a little warm up before the main event, which of course, again, is the bungee jump. After zip lining to the middle-ish section of the bridge where you can then walk to the actual bungee jumping zone, it really starts to feel real and the nerves really start kicking in. After everyone in the group went zip lining, we took off the helmets that were given to us just before the zip line. We conversed our nerves and excitement with one another and awaited to hear our lineup of who would jump first. Yeah, so we can't figure out the order we want to go. We're assigned our order because they need a specific order based on your weight and your build slash stature. The friend I made, Irma, she was told that she would go first and she was definitely nervous. <laughs> I was told that I would be going second, and looking back, I don't think the lineup really mattered much to me. I think if I went last, though, that would probably be way too much of waiting time. I'm glad I went second. All right, as I keep saying, everything happens so fast. So when Irma was getting ready to jump, I could feel myself pacing from nerves, you know, stomping left to right, left to right, swaying my body. I might have gotten a little nervous that I think I could have peed my pants, but really, I don't think I was as terribly phased as you might think. I was standing in my quote red zone, which is where we were told we could not cross the red boundaries because they just have red tape there until we were told to do so and a worker escorted us elsewhere. While I was standing, one of the workers attached a cushion thing on both of my shins, but all I knew was that this was just attached by a Velcro patch. Just a Velcro patch. I think that is crazy. So this was not too comforting for me, you know, thinking I'm going to jump however 260 meters, is that what I said? And all the way down, and there's just a Velcro patch on my shins protecting me, God forbid. So this Velcro patch going on my shins, this happened right before Irma was getting ready to jump off. And all I can remember is her going so quickly. So when she jumped off, it was my turn to get ready. I sat in a little platform while a guy wrapped the bungee cord so that my legs would be together. He first wrapped it, I believe, like horizontally around the shins with the Velcro and then wrapped me vertically over the previous horizontal wrap. Hopefully you can get a decent picture here. I didn't even feel like I was wrapped so tight. Certainly not tight enough to feel confident again jumping off a bridge looking back. So honestly, I still don't know what was really on me, but it felt like nothing. There was a photographer and he got a funny picture when the guy was wrapping the rope around me and I have my eyes closed and my lips perked. Like I'm taking a deep exhale. Once I was all wrapped and almost ready to go, I stood up and went. I would have said I walked, but keep in mind my two feet are right together. Kind of like I'm a penguin, sort of. So I have to waddle to move. Anyways, I waddled to the workers who are about seven feet from the edge of the bridge at this point, And they clicked me in near my chest and they said click one, click two, or check one, check two, something like that. And by clicked me in... I mean that they snatched me into those hooks that save you from falling off the bridge because you're attached to whatever is attached to the hook. 
like on the zip line you're attached to a rope thing and then get hooked on that's what i'm talking about i just don't know the correct suitable name for it so from the time you get secured with the click slash hooks to the time you actually jump off the bridge it really is not much time at all maybe a minute or so couldn't even tell you it's quite rushed if you want to put it that way but they probably do it purposely so that people you know don't have time to overthink too much but when they said it was go time, I waddled closer and closer to the literal edge of the bridge. Of course, I looked down, took in the view for a split second. Oh, and by the way, I was recording this all on my GoPro. The video after is too funny. Oh my gosh. They told me to put my toes over the edge of the bridge. Just imagine that. Put your toes over the edge of the bridge. I mean, I was only trying to do like my big toe, certainly not my pinky toe, or else I feel like I would lose balance and just topple off before they would count me down. So, oh my goodness. They also told me that they would say one, two, three, bungee, and I would jump. They said to jump as far as I could and then start parallel to the ground, like the position of a, I don't know, like a flying squirrel. Then obviously you would topple down. So you're vertical and upside down. Hopefully that makes sense. But I jumped. And all I can remember is screaming a lot and cursing so much that I am embarrassed to show my GoPro video. <laughs> Irma's family got a video from their iPhone of me jumping off the bridge. Oh my gosh. And my scream sounds too funny because I sound petrified. <laughs> it's like I saw a ghost. I first watched it literally many days after the bungee jump in my cabin before going to bed. Like it was probably eh, maybe midnight-ish. And I was laughing too hard. Luckily my roommate didn't hear me though because she was asleep. Okay, now back to the actual jump. Jumping off for a long distance without any force pulling you back for however many seconds is a crazy odd feeling. It was beyond fun though and I would 100% do it again. When you feel like the catapult of the bungee cord, it might be a bit of a relief, but I still was nervous that I would just fall right out of the gear. It was also so strange because I'm upside down practically the whole time after I jump, which is another interesting feeling, being still high above ground and dangling, trying to turn your head to see the land below you better, yet still feeling anxious that literally every move you can make could be a greater chance of falling off. That's just how my brain was working. I don't know if this is what most people think. I couldn't tell you. But because of my constant nerves, I was still screaming even after the fall, which it was probably a bit much. I'm a screamer. I, I think I'm a screamer. If I'm scared, I'm just going to continue screaming. By the way, the whole bungee jumping experience of jumping, hanging, and then getting rolled back up to the bridge is all within maybe three-ish minutes or so. Anyways, once you've stopped catapulting, feeling the effects of the bungee cord going up and down, up and down, and you've settled upside down for a little while, it's time for part three of this experience. There's a guy, or shall we call him our savior, who makes his way down from the rope all the way from the bridge, goes down to you, he attaches you to something, or you attach to him by something. I couldn't tell you what. Either it's him or some other object attached to the rope, but... I was too full of adrenaline to even pay attention, even though that may be a lie because I was still nervous that I would fall off while he was doing whatever he was doing. But I believe this whole thing is called a winch ride based on my research. So it's pretty much a pulley system that brings the worker down. He grabs me and we're brought back up together. However, keep in mind that again, I'm upside down. And when he grabs me, I immediately want to clench this man so hard. But they told us not to do that because... I was not going to jeopardize anything, so of course I did not do that. I was a little worried that I was hanging on by a thread, and when I heard the sounds of unhooking, it caused a slight panic in me. But all was well, and I was no longer upside down. Instead, I was somewhat parallel to the ground because I had my legs stiff straight as I came up while my upper body was more bent, if you can get that picture. I guess it was kind of like I was sitting on a chair with my back against it and my feet straight up. The guy rolling me up asked me how it was, and I probably said it was... Very scary and nerve-wracking, but very fun. That was really the answer to anyone who asked me. And I would add and emphasize that it was so worth it. And I'm really, really glad I made the time in South Africa to do this. I literally had the biggest smile on my face. I know I did. And the adrenaline was still pumping. I was smiling like this literally the whole time after the jump while telling the other people who were up next how fun it was. And Irma and I were also both in shock because we finally did what we came to this bridge to do. And it's definitely a cool, awesome moment. I will never forget. And it's also fun seeing the other guys in the group go and then their reactions afterwards because we all enjoyed it and it was a ton of fun. Now, once we we're all done with the bungee jumping, we were still in awe of the whole experience, but unfortunately it was time to leave. 
And that leads me to the fourth part of this adventure, which is walking over the 216 meters of distance between you and the ground, aka the skywalk part, what they call it. You might think that this part could be a walk in the park, but frankly, I still felt some nerves and stiffness walking over the bridge with a clear view of what was below me. The platform that you walk over has circular looking openings so that you can see how far above the ground you are. It doesn't help looking down, of course, but how could you not? So yes, as I was walking and looking below me, it surely looked like I was walking weird. I was moving slower and more hesitantly. It probably could have been a quick two minute walk tops, but I think it took us all at least double that time, which might not seem like a lot, but certainly kind of felt like a lot. We also stopped to take a last look of the beautiful view from the bridge and to snap some pictures and videos. After leaving the bridge site, we went to the place where we could see the pictures that were taken of us in the final video that was made of our experience. I knew either way that I was 100% buying everything, even though I had my GoPro video, but they would have a video of you actually jumping off, which is cool. They really couldn't inflate their prices because they must know that most people want to buy something and a chunk of their audience is mainly tourists. It was just about 20 US dollars for all the media. And the video is cool too because there's actually a camera right near the edge of the bridge. The moment like your feet are right over the bridge you look over it shows your facial expressions the workers actually told us to smile at this specific camera also because the tv is played live in this media shop but i totally forgot to smile look at that camera i totally forgot about that whole camera there i love the video though because it gets you jumping off the bridge again and dangling from the bungee it's really cool Anyways, after all the adrenaline and, by the way, it's still not over at this point, I walked over towards Irdema's family and they had bottles of beer, Corona, or La Cerveza Mas Fina, as it said on the bottle, and they topped it off with a lemon. Irdema was given a bottle and her father, Patrick, had a bottle in his hands but offered me his drink. I said, ah, no thanks, no thanks a few times, but you know when you keep saying no thanks and the other person is kind of pushing you back, not in a hostile way, but in a friendly manner, and you realize you're probably not going to win this battle and you should probably just give in. Well, that's exactly what I did. And I hate beer. I think it's disgusting. I've also never even had Corona before. And hence, of course, never Corona with a lemon. So when I was saying, ah, no thanks, no thanks, actually kind of meant it. But it was surprisingly not too bad. And I don't think I would have it again if I was given the chance. But we cheered our glasses together and I took a few sips. They probably had the whole bottle. Once I said my goodbyes after celebrating with Irma and her family, they left. I stayed for a little bit longer, just admiring the view, looking onto the bridge, and then just its beautiful surrounding nature, embracing the proudness, I guess you could say, that I felt, because really this is not something I had planned, as I said a few months ago. Anyways, I hopped back into the car with Tabani, and we drove for a little bit, and then searched for some fast food. We were trying to first look for a McDonald's, but he accidentally missed the turn. Then we ended up at a KFC in a township, which a township, by the way, it's a place where mainly black people live because under the apartheid system in South Africa, blacks are forced to live in these segregated areas. So it was very interesting to see the different dynamics between a township and where the ship was docked in Cape Town in the Western Cape province because they were drastically different experiences of South Africa. Back to Tabani and the KFC food, they didn't have sandwiches or burgers, and it was just a smaller chain of KFC, so Tabani decided to go elsewhere. After stopping for some coffee for him at a gas station, and so he could take a quick power nap, we ended up driving to a McDonald's and getting food from there. Tabani took another nap, and he also loaded up on some Red Bull, an energy drink. He was definitely tired, as I said early on this episode. I feel bad. But after conversing with Tabani, taking a little nap, I woke up near sunset time admiring the beautiful South African nature. This is literally the most beautiful country I've ever been to, I think. The mountains, the ocean, everything is just incredible. Driving through the eastern and western capes with great views oh, was just beautiful. And I hope to never forget the beauty of this country. Overall, though, this experience was a freaking blast and I enjoyed it so much if you cannot tell throughout this whole episode. Like I said earlier, this was probably the biggest thrill of my whole life and on the top of my list of the most adventurous things I've ever done. So I am very happy I was able to check this off of my bucket list. Now that's all for my South Africa bungee jumping story. Let's get into the gratitude section of my show, which let me re-emphasize why I have a gratitude section and why I say three things I'm grateful for. So the voyage I'm on with Semester at Sea, we're on voyage 133. So that's where I got the number three for three things I'm grateful for because to be consistent with those threes. 
And I wanted something gratitude or appreciation or thankfulness because that's very important to recognize. All right, so three things I'm grateful for. One, so I'm in Takarati, Ghana right now. I literally just arrived probably less than two hours ago because I was in Tema, Ghana, which is about six hours away from where I am now. And I was doing a little volunteer thing there for just a couple of days. It was very, very short. I was able to meet some great people, the Ghanaian kids, super nice. Oh, the highlight for me was definitely playing basketball with the kids ranging from six to even kids my age, 20 year olds, even a little older. So I want to say first gratitude is just for the people I've been able to meet in Ghana. Second one, this could go on with the first one, but very grateful for this volunteer community. It's really something I hope to do for the rest of my life. And I feel like everyone should do it at some point because you just learn so much really about others and it makes you appreciate things in your life that you probably took for granted and you don't realize that a lot of people in the world just don't have some of the things you do. For my second gratitude, I'm going to go back to South Africa and say the people I met, I'll go with Tabani, the driver who drove me bungee jumping. He was super nice and it was very nice of him to drive me, even though of course I paid him. But he gave me a good price compared to other, even other Uber drivers I inquired with. And then also very grateful I met Irdema and her family because they were just too kind. I swear, these people in the Nordic countries are just too nice. I think I saw on Instagram the other day, like the list of the happiest countries. And I think Sweden was like number two. I don't know what's with the Swedes, but I definitely got to learn from them. All right. So number three, kind of basic, but just semester at sea. This overall experience, traveling to all these countries, I'm really seeing how I'm kind of growing and adapting my perspective, changing maybe some thoughts or opinions. I don't even know. You definitely see the world differently and it'll be interesting when I go back home soon to just observe people in my neighborhood, everything like that. But very grateful that I've had this opportunity for such a unique experience and never thought I would do it, but very very thankful for that so those are my three gratitudes what are you grateful for i'd like to ask and that's all i have for you today hopefully you can keep sailing with me for the last month or so until next time sincerely soph